us all safe, the ceremony will be hosted as a hybrid event with limited seats for invited guests here in this hall, live streaming on social media platform. We thank every one of you, either sitting in this hall or watching online, for joining us in the IET Hong Kong YWE Award Ceremony, celebrating together the excellence of young women engineers in Hong Kong and all the contributions they've made. To extend the IET's warmest welcome from the other side of the globe, we are glad to have our past YWE winner, Ms. Michelle Richmond, who is now Director of Membership and Professional Development of the IET, to give us a welcome message in the form of a video speech. We will now invite Ms. Richmond. Thank you. Good evening to all our guests at the IET's first ever Hong Kong Young Woman Engineer of the Year Awards. It's fantastic that we have so much talent to celebrate within the engineering community. Congratulations to all the winners and finalists today. You are excellent role models who I'm certain will help inspire the next generation to engineer a better world. Our Young Woman Engineer of the Year Awards have been taking place in the United Kingdom for over 40 years. And I'm now delighted to see this important celebration is now taking place in Hong Kong as well. It's a great platform for presenting role models to future generations and recognizing the need for a more diverse talent within our industry. I was awarded the Young Woman Engineer of the Year Award back in 1990. It led to becoming involved as a volunteer for the institution and taking part in the Academic Accreditation Committee. I was able to travel across the United Kingdom, Singapore and Hong Kong, assessing and assuring the quality of student learning, which was a huge privilege. This life experience was well beyond my day-to-day -day job of designing radar on a very small island, not unlike Hong Kong, off the south coast of England. The award opened so many opportunities and eventually led to my first director's role at the IET. I've been proud to be a role model, showing the way for achievement of women in engineering. Our mission is to inspire, inform and influence the engineering community we are working to engineer a better world. An important aspect is to recognise and celebrate diverse talent. We are passionate about promoting and supporting our equality, diversity and inclusion strategy. It is a crucial element in ensuring there is an equal representation within industry and the next generation see engineering as a creative and rewarding career. But most importantly, it's accessible to everyone. By making this commitment to equality, diversity and inclusion, we hope to drive real change in helping the engineering community to grow and solve the global challenges we face today. I hope you have a wonderful evening celebrating the success of talented women engineers. We are really proud Hong Kong have taken a lead in hosting such an event outside of the United Kingdom. Again, huge congratulations to our finalists and winners. And do you know what? I really look forward to seeing the impact that you make as role models. Thank you very much. I believe all of us have got the inspiring messages Miss Richmond has delivered from, his, uh, from her video speech. Without further ado, may we now invite Dr. Tim Wu, Chairman of the IET Hong Kong, to give us a welcoming speech. Dr. Wu, please. And Dr. Tan, Architect Fung, guests, judges, awardees, on behalf of the Institute of Engineering and Technologies, IET Hong Kong, this is my purchase to give a, a welcome all of you to join the first 
Young Women's Engineer Awards 2002 and 2020 organized by the IET Hong Kong. Today, I'm happy to meet many engineers, especially the women engineers. In this 20 years, more and more females are studying and also uh, working in the engine discipline as engineers. According to information to a local university, they are among 25% of the females studying in the engineering field in the past 20 years. So in addition, engine, females engineers also make a great effort and their talents to the industry and society. We are looking forward to encourage more females to join our community in the future. The young the young award, uh, the young award recognize excellence and the contribution of the women in the engine field. First, I would like to congratulate to all the awardees. They are not only contribute their professional knowledge in their field, they also spend their time in returning to society and promoting en women in engineer. We are truly impressed by the nominees' com and commitments to their work and also their inspiration to their fellows. This is our pleasure to listen to their journeys in the engineering in this ceremony. To further and, and emphasize the importance of the women of engineers and hence the impact of the Young Women Engineer Award, the award is will become our ambassadors in promoting engineering to, engineering to the youth, especially in the STEM for Girls programs. Even this is a challenging year, this never stop our engineers and ambassadors in reaching out to our girls in high and uh, secondary school. They organize the online activities under the new normal, and we are looking forward to having more females and also and to engage and contribute to engineering field in the future. Let me express my warmest graduations to all the nominees, finalists, and our one years. I would like to thank the organizing committee for their kind effort and also distinguished judges panel for their support and participation. Also, I would like to express my uh, whole heart thanks to all the companies and organizations in encourage their employees and to and colleagues to support uh, this event. And also special thanks from all the supporting organizations to this event. Looking forward to listening to keynote speech and also sharing from the uh, award list. I wish you all a great day and a very successful years ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Wu. Please be seated. We would now like to invite Ms. Justina Ho, Chair Lady of the IET Hong Kong YWE Award Ceremony Organizing Committee, to deliver an opening speech. Ms. Ho, please. Um, architect Fong, Professor. Thank you for joining the award ceremony of the IET Hong Kong Young Women Engineer of the Year Award, YWE 2019 2020. With 170,000 members worldwide, the IET is a professional home to inspire, inform, influence the global engineering community supporting technology innovation to meet the needs of the society. By engaging with underrepresented groups, not only are we increasing the chance of those groups entering this exciting profession, we are encouraging other engineering organizations to do the same so that impactful changes can occur. Equality, diversity, and inclusion, the EDI, has never been a crucial part of the IET policies and we have recently launched the new EDI strategy that sets out the areas we focus on with a global reach. Of the many diversity strands, our efforts on gender diversity had already made great impacts, bringing 9% of women working in the engineering and technology field in the UK to 12% within just a few years. The YWE recognizes outstanding young women engineers who have made valuable contributions to the society through their engineering achievements and inspirations to younger generations. Being an award-winning initiative itself, the YWE has served the engineering community in the UK for more than 40 years. It is now time to make this impact in Hong Kong. With regard to having around 20% women 
making up the local engineering and technology workforce, the IET Hong Kong has launched STEM for Girls program and Women in Science and Technology program to help girls to find role models in female engineers and to encourage them to embrace technology. The YWE was launched in Hong Kong to complete the cycle and foster women engineers' professionalism, dedication, enthusiasm, and leadership in the local community. We hope that our works in gender diversity can help set the stage for bordering our EDI efforts in Hong Kong and to make greater impact and reach wider and more inclusive audiences. Our winners and finalists, all accomplished young ladies here, we act as the ambassador for IET to promote gender diversity in the Hong Kong industry, encouraging girls to discover their STEM talents and to pursue their dreams in the technology world. It is also the duty to share with the younger generations the spirit of professionalism and the essence of social responsibilities, aka the IET spirit. We have lots of fascinating activities in store for them. They had already started their roles as the big sisters for the Stanford Girls Program and shared with over 100 secondary school students in October about what it's like working as a young women engineers and how they found the path to become successful in their fields. I would like to express our greatest gratitude to our judges, sponsors, partners, and guests for their support, and I'm particularly grateful for the great efforts of the organizing committee despite all odds. Even though it turns out that the past year had been a very difficult year to launch a project of this scale, and it's most unfortunately that some of our honorable guests will have to join us virtually today. The essence of this project is to reach, is to search for leaders who can, uh, who can embrace challenges with strong spirits. And here we are. So congratulations to our winners and finalists. We look forward to building the YW community and working closely with you in the near future. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ho. We would not have been able to make this award ceremony happen without the generous support from our very important sponsors. May I now invite Dr. Tim Wu to present the souvenirs to our sponsors. Dr. Wu, please. We would now like to invite the representatives of our sponsors to come on stage. Gold sponsor. CLP Power Hong Kong Limited. Thank you. Silver Sponsor, NTR Corporation Limited. Thank you. Bronze sponsors, Autodesk Far East Limited. The Hong Kong Electric Company Limited. Hong Kong Information Technology Joint Council. Representatives of Hong Kong Electric and ITJC couldn't join us physically, but we thank them for their support. And our special sponsors, Phoenix Communications Limited. The 440 Productions. The representatives of the 440 Productions and Phoenix couldn't join us physically today, but we thank them for their support. May we invite all representatives of our sponsors and our OC chair lady, Ms. Justina Ho, back on stage for a group photo. Thank you.
Thank you. Please be seated. Dr. Wu, please remain on stage. We will now invite Dr. Wu to present souvenirs to our honorable judges of the IET Hong Kong YWE Awards as a gesture of gratitude. Chief Judge, Architect Ada Y.S. Fung, BBS. Thank you. Final round, judges. Professor Stella W. Pang. Thank you. Mr. Hendrik Sin. Mr. Sin couldn't join us physically today, but we thank them for his support. And Ms. Justina Ho, who's also our OC chair lady, thank you. May we now invite all our final round judges back on stage for a group photo? Thank you. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Mr. CS, uh, Engineer C.S. Chang, please. I'm very sorry. Thank you very much. I'm sorry again. Um, yeah, I mean, we now invite all final round judges back on stage for a group photo. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Now our first round judges, Engineer K.W. Chen. Thank you. Engineer W. I. Ho. Engineer Ben Lee. Thank you. Miss Joanne Y. K. T. Engineer Angel Y. Y. Wong. Thank you. Miss Heather W. Y. Lam. Dr. Carmen K. M. Lee. Dr. Lee couldn't join us physically today. We thank her for her support. May we now invite all our first round judges and our OC chair lady, Ms. Justina Ho, back on stage for a group photo. Thank you.
we will invite all our first round judges. Thank you. Thank you. Please remain on stage. Please remain on stage, judges. <laughs> we'd, we'd now like to invite all our final round judges back on stage to join us in the group photo. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please be seated. We would also like to extend our heartfelt thanks to all our supporting organizations. The British Computer, the British Computer Society Hong Kong Section, the Chartered Institution of Building Services Engineers Hong Kong Region, the Hong Kong Association for Computer Education, Hong Kong Computers Society, the Hong Kong Institution of Engineers, Hong Kong New Emerging Technology Education Association, Hong Kong Small and Medium Enterprises Association, the Open University of Hong Kong, our Hong Kong Foundation, the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, and Vocational Training Council. Thank you all for your support. It is my great pleasure to introduce to all of you our guest of honor today, Dr. Winnie Tang, JP, founder and chairman of Esri China Hong Kong Limited. Dr. Winnie Tang, JP, is an adjunct professor in the Department of Computer Science, Faculty of Engineering, Department of Geography, Faculty of Social Sciences, and Faculty of Architecture at the University of Hong Kong. She is one of the locally bred IT entrepreneurs of Hong Kong. Dr. Tang has over 20 years of experience in the information and communications technology industry. Dr. Tang is the founder and chairman of Esri China Hong Kong Limited, an international office of Esri which specializes in geographic information system technology and is among the top 50 software companies in the world. Over the years, Dr. Tang promotes technological and social developments by writing articles and serving the society. She also shares her views regarding conservation, smart city, and entrepreneurship to instill in positive attitudes to the community. She has published 12 Chinese and English books and over 600 research papers, newspaper articles, and journals. Some of her current major appointments include founder and honorary president of the Smart City Consortium, member of the ICT Services Advisory Committee, Hong Kong Trade Development Council, 
a board member of AEHIN, Asia eHealth Information Network, etc. In recognition of Dr. Tang's works, she has been awarded the, D the Distinguished Alumni for HKU Faculty of Science in 2009, the 10 Outstanding Young Persons in 2006, the Women of Influence Young Achiever of the Year Award by the American Chamber of Commerce in 2004. Now let us enjoy the video keynote speech prepared by Dr. Tang, especially for all of us. Thank you. Hi everyone. I'm extremely delighted to learn that IET has recognized outstanding young women engineers. I must congratulate all winners of the Young Women Engineers Awards. And I do look forward to working with you all in building Hong Kong as a smart city. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for IET to invite me to speak in this Young Women Engineer Awards ceremony. Thank you very much. Uh, today, I would like to share with you the topic, Technologies Driving a Smart and Livable City. Smart city has become a buzzy word in recent years. And a lot of countries and cities talk about how to make their cities smarter and smarter each day. There are a lot of reasons that leading to that, say the quick urbanization, aging population, social conflict, inequality. In the world, uh, according to United Nations, it's estimated by the year 2050, two-thirds of our Earth population will live in cities. That means that will lead to a number of programs in the city, like the housing program, the pollution program, the traffic jam, the lack of quality or sufficient jobs in the cities, and the insufficient public services as well. In Hong Kong, we also face severe programs in our cities, say we have over 300,000 housing units aged over 30, which is 300 times of that in the year 2015. We also have over 52% of our lived aged 20 years or above. One third of our populations would be aged 65 or above by the year 2040. And once again, it leads to a lot of different program. And that we, our city, Hong Kong, like the, all the other cities in the world, will need to upgrade, enhance our city to be smarter and become a smart city that empower with the development of cities all over the world. A lot of people ask me what's the definition of smart city. In fact, there is uh, no such agreed definitions of smart city yet. However, generally speaking, people tend to agree on smart city refers to the use of ICT, information communication technology, to improve the quality of life and city services making the city more livable. And the ultimate goal is to enhance quality of life and foster sustainable growth. When we develop smart city, ICT is always the backbone that power up smart city. And GIS, geographic information system, sometimes we call geospatial technology, has been regarded as the foundations or foundation technologies to power up smart city. It used geography to show where is what, say the locational pattern, the distributions, the relationship between different activities, the pattern, and how it's being linked to census say, the Internet of Things, to show the real-time, say, uh, tracking of the truck, the car locations. And then throughout the process, we generate a lot of big data, say, the spatial temporal data, and then coupled with AI to do a lot of projections 
or what if scenario analysis, and that back to the GIS to do the further geospatial processing as well, and it formed the foundation layer for all of the smart cities of the world. Now, different countries and cities have set different themes for their smart city development. Say for Denmark, Copenhagen, and they have set their theme for smart city development as creating a zero emission city by the year 2025. For Sweden, they have also set the theme of their smart city as the Vision Zero program for making Sweden as the city to eliminate all traffic related death by the year 2025. The theme for smart city development of the UK, London, is the fintech capital of the world. London used to be the financial capital of the world. It's natural that they want to become a fintech capital of the world. In Dubai, it's a little bit different. The smart city program office manager has set the gross national happiness index as their theme for smart city development. And for India, they have set the theme for their smart city development as the 100th smart cities project by the year 2023, which is to drive economic growth and improve quality of life. In Thailand, they have set up the theme for their smart city development as to build 100 smart cities in two years' time and to make Thailand innovative with value-based industry and high-income country is called Thailand 4.0 in their film for smart city development. And for Japan, uh, it is the countries that highlight a lot on the human-centered society. They want to develop Japan using super smart society as the theme for their smart city development, or sometimes we refer it to Society 5.0, that is to develop Japan into a smart city from 1.0 hunting, 2.0 farming, 3.0 industrial, 4.0 information, to 5.0 super smart society, which emphasize a lot on human-centered society to balance economic development and solve social issues. And for our motherland, mainland China, and they have also set the theme of the smart city related to our environment. The theme is beautiful China, Mei Li Zhongguo. It aims at building China to have a clean environment full of high-tech companies, and the, company, and the government is responsive. Now, there is a famous professor in smart city called Dr. Boy Cohen, and he has defined smart city into six different components, namely smart economy, mobility, environment, living, government, and people. The reason I bring this up to you is when the, our government launched our Smart City Blueprint in December 2017, they have also used these six components as the theme. And later on in my presentations to share with you the journey of Hong Kong towards Smart City, I will also give you a few examples of each of the components. And Boy Cohen has also defined Smart City into three phases from technology-driven Smart City 1.0 to government-driven Smart City 2.0. Example is like in 2015, our government earmarked the uh, Energizing Kowloon East office in, the, in Kowloon Bay area to develop as a pilot Smart City. And then the Smart City 3.0, which is a citizen-driven approach, is a bottom-up approach to develop the city as a smart city. Now, in terms of the ranking, Hong Kong is actually not that bad. We are in the top 10. The first three is London, New York, and Paris. It is the latest figure already. And in terms of market size, 
Asia alone has the highest market share in smart city development. And in China alone, we have earmarked 500 pilot cities to be developed as smart city, which account for over 650 billion RMB. And in the development plan that set forth in the Great Bay Area in February last year, there is also a chapter dedicated to the development of the Great Bay Area as a smart city cluster. And from that chapter, you can easily find that there are lots of different smart city initiatives being mentioned there, like the open data portal, the spatial information service platform, just like the common spatial data infrastructure that the government had, our government has been written in the Hong Kong Smart City Blueprint 1.0. And there will be soon a lot of different initiatives related to CSDI that engineers like your good self should better study more and equip yourself on this upcoming infrastructure that will be of paramount importance for Hong Kong as well as to the Great Bay Area in the world. In terms of the ranking in Asia, Hong Kong is once again not that bad and we are being ranked deferred in Asia. Now, we are committed to develop Hong Kong as smart city. Now, since 2017 December, the launch of the Blueprint 1.0, we have 70 projects being initiated. And then in the policy address in 1.7 and 1.8 or even 1.9, there's a lot of different policies, backup and initiative set forth in the policy address. One of which very clear is the open data policy within the government and the establishment of the common spatial data infrastructure. And then in budget, you can tell that in the, in the this year, last year, and the year before the budget, our financial secretary has invested over 100 billion already in ICT area or innovation and technology. And he always classified the investment into these four areas, biotechnology, AI, smart city, and fintech. Fintech has been one of the four areas get most funded in terms of the citywide rollout of smart city applications. And then you can, uh, I have had already mentioned about the smart city cluster in the development plant of the Great Bay Area. Now, I have been told that the Blueprint 2.0 will be launched in November or December time. And we shall also focus on these six components or six area, one of which you might want to take a closer look is the IM Smart Platform, the EID Electronic Identifications, uh, which is something that will be launched this and ne or next month. Now, I would like to draw your attention to some examples of each component. Now, at your top left-hand side, you can see smart economy, and I will go through the six components one by one very briefly. For smart economy, Hong Kong MA has initiated seven initiatives under the banner of the smart city, uh, fast payment system, open API, uh, virtual banks, etc., and etc. As of yesterday, in the FinTech Week, uh, the Hong Kong MA has also launched a new initiative called Common Data Infrastructure, which helps support SME to get financing more easily through bank-to-bank -bank communications with the use of open data. And in terms of Startup Hong Kong is actually doing very well. And since 2017, we have a growth of startup, startup for over 42%, and that lead to a growth of the employees in the startup for over 90%. And uh, Hong Kong is uh, such a small area with our 
smart city developments just at the beginning stage, but we already have more than eight unicorns. It can be increased uh, momentarily. And it, half of the unicorns, you may want to know that is actually from fintech industry. And that means that smart economy, one of the components in smart cities has actually been taking effect. In terms of smart living, it's always referred to how we use smart technologies to help enhance our living, like the e-health, electronic health, IT and health development. And about 17 years ago, I was the first one that who developed the SARS local, regional, and international global map uh, of SARS. And at the right-hand side, you can see that the Los Angeles Times especially flight to Hong Kong and interviewed me, who was at the background, uh, showcasing how GIS has been used to help mapping the outbreak of SARS. 17 years later, I have uh, also managed to successfully convince our Hong Kong government during the outbreak of SARS, uh, during the outbreaks of the COVID-19, we were able to use just three days to uphold public and private partnerships. Volunteers from Smart City Consortium and officials from the Hong Kong government joined hands to develop the COVID-19 interactive map dashboard for Hong Kong citizens and the world. And if you take a look at the right-hand side, the global one is the John Hopkins University, which is the first in the world to develop the global COVID-19 interactive map dashboard. And then the central one is the China CDC. We, Hong Kong, we must be proud that we were able to launch our COVID-19 interactive map dashboard the same day as the China CDC launched the dashboard, as well the, as the WHO launched their interactive mapping dashboard on COVID-19. So we, are, we can say that uh, we are actually not that bad in catching up the international effort in making our effort transparent to the citizens and get them updated to have a full picture of what COVID-19 is all about through this website. And so far, this public-private partnership has proved to be very effective and useful to the citizens. Now we got over 3,800 million will uh, since the launch at the, in the 3rd of February. We only use three days with public private partnership to develop this interactive map dashboard for COVID-19 in Hong Kong. And this is the look and feel of the John Hopkins University dashboard for the world. And GIS has been the backbone, the foundation technology to help support the development of all this interactive mapping dashboards all over the world. Actually, it's not just for showing the locations of the incidents uh, of the affected community. Uh, it's also been used to do link analysis, that is to do contact tracing. And also, it can be used, I mean, GIS can be used to power up dashboard or applications for fighting of disease, allocating resources, and also to help in matching the different efforts in combating the COVID-19 in a more effective way. Okay, other than smart living, let's move on to smart people. Smart people is always refer to the nurturing of youngsters through smart policy, uh, smart activities like the Young Women's Engineers Awards that IET is doing now. And for Hong Kong's secondary and primary school, what I have been done is uh, 
this is continuing promoting STEM education to them. This is the first and foremost inter-school competitions of the primary and secondary schools of Hong Kong that organized by Education Bureau. Uh, I was fortunate that to be the chief judge of the competitions. A year later, we were able to transform the competition into Smart City Project Program. It's now uh, EDB continue to run it for all primary and secondary schools of Hong Kong. There are a lot of meaningful Smart City pilot projects being done by our youngsters, and that, in fact, can also match with, might be later on, IET would like to do with your various competitions, including the Young Women's Engineers competitions. And wearing the other hat as the chairman and founder of the S3 China Hong Kong, and since five years ago, I believe that STEM for education is the key for success for Smart City in Hong Kong later on. So I have decided to donate all our GIS software to all of the primary and secondary schools of Hong Kong to power up their GIS laboratory capability and also to add spatial literacy to the students of Hong Kong. And we have also created Young Scholars Program all over the world each of the regions or city to name their young scholars on GIS and use the tools to help solve global program. And the winner of Hong Kong last year was uh, Jason Choi from the University of Hong Kong and he used GIS to find out where are the most dangerous road locations in Hong Kong. And for startup program, in fact, startup has also been instrumental to, start, to smart city development, as you can tell in the smart economy slide that I've just shown you. And for startup, uh, we also created a three-year free program, free of charge GIS software, provided free of charge to all of the startups for three years. So it is also included in the program some of the support for them to attend our user conference, attend our overseas event all over the world. Now, other than smart people, we, now let's move on to smart government, which is perhaps one of the most important, important parts of the smart city program or blueprint development. For smart government, they have had embraced open data policy since the launch of the Blueprint 1.0. Now we have over 4,000 data sets open for the public to download or share, and thousands of API, and it is expected that uh, last year there, will, there was 700 data sets being added from 80 bureaus and departments. Among the data sets, among the 400 data sets, or the, all the open data, in fact, according to a study by OECD, and it is uh, being, uh, it, is, it has been found out that geographic information, among all the other types of information, has been the most popular, has been the one with the regarded as the highest commercial value compared to the others like meteorological, environmental, economic, business information, social information, transport information. So it is because of that geographic information has been regarded as the most popular and highest commercial value. So it is also therefore a lot of countries and cities developed smart city and used geographic information as the foundation so that geographic information can be created, maintained, and shared instantly when we, they further developed other smart city applications. It is also because spatial data or information, in fact, 
80% of it has a geospatial element. And that, like where is what, and use geography to map, say, the locations of activities, the distributions, and how it is related to each other's, the patterns, the relationship, and that we need the GIS to help in mapping those data, capturing those data, storing the data, displaying the data, and analyzing the data. And when we combine the data together, it's just like the portrait of the real world using GIS. And as engineers, we might use a lot of different systems and a lot of different data from imagery, unstructured, 3D data, beam data, IoT data, tracking data, and that GIS is like a common data environment, CDE, or the kind of geospatial infrastructure that help you to use map, to map all of them layer by layer, and you virtually have a direct access to all this data through GIS, and that since they have been georeferenced, so you are just like covering them one over the other on the Earth's surface, and that you can see the portrait of the real world through GIS. Now, here you go, some of the examples as a highways departments that they have used GIS for electronic management and maintenance system, intranet mapping, road data maintenance, traffic information, and on your right-hand side, you may be interested to know that there is a camera on top of the car. Actually, this is uh, real-time mobile mapping technology which, for which you can take video 360 degree, and you can identify any feature in the video and know the exact locations, including the X, Y, as well as the Z, that is the height of the of the uh, feature in the video. And that is very in effective in terms of surveying. Uh, that is, it is a real-time mobile surveying anytime, any place, without any black spot. And for civil engineering department, and they use GIS to build their geological map uh, database, and that we can also identify dangerous slope and do profiling. And for EMSD, they have also put together their 1,800 traffic light into the GIS for maintenance purpose and operation facilities management purpose. Whenever any traffic lights get programmed and they uh, they can easily get known and send engineers to go and to fix it. And the same also true, they get all the footbridges of Hong Kong and a number of other facilities that EMSD managed to the GIS in EMSD. And for land planning, transport, environment, they have long been using GIS, at least for uh, two decades. From the developments of the map base for Hong Kong, 100, uh, 1 to 500 to 1 to 20,000 scales, and the planning, the so uh, statutory planning portal, portal, and the transport information system, and the Environmental Protection Department use GIS to track pollution and illegal dumping as well. And because we have all this uh, ge uh, reach of geographic information or GIS being used by all sorts of departments and bureaus, the governments uh, headed by CEDD developed a common operational picture, COP, uh, that over 20 bureau and department join hands to work together, not just in information compilation, but also the analysis on the what if 
scenario, that is when there is a typhoon, how can we deploy resources to help fixing programs that are caused by the typhoon? And in the recent typhoon attack, our Chief Secretary, Melville, has also visited this emergency planning center, which has the COP being showcased and all the departments and bureaus join hand to use GIS to have a common picture and help plan for a smarter and better Hong Kong and to overcome the natural disaster that we have been facing. And remember, I have had mentioned a lot about this Common Spatial Data Infrastructure, CSDI. It has been highlighted in the Smart City Blueprint 1.0 since 2017. And thereafter, all the other government departments and bureaus is trying to develop their data, in particular, make their GIS data to be ready for CSDI. And now, the government has given the mandate to lens department to create the Hong Kong Geodata Store, uh, which in a way is also called CSDI, or the CSDI portal, and which will be launched in 2022 to help support Hong Kong to have a single common spatial data infrastructure that integrate all the geographical related data, no matter it's GIS data, BIM data, 3D data, imagery data in a single portal is called Geodata Store and is all is the CSDI. And so it is really the time that you have to learn about this if you haven't heard of it. For the 2022, when the CSDI portal is being launched, on your right hand side is not only the, all these different types of data that can be direct use through the CSDI portal, the Geodata Store, there will also be policy, data and standards, technologies and applications, people and sharing. All this will be instituted together when the CSDI portal is being launched. Now, you might be interested to note that this CSDI portal also aim at not just the GIS data all over uh, the city of Hong Kong, but also the repository of the BIM data that will be created all over Hong Kong to be deposited in this CSDI portal, the Geodata Store, and that it will be to a large extent open up for our citizens, our startup, to use or to develop meaningful applications for our smart city. And when we are doing GIS, BIM, or uh, delivering AEC services, it is very often the workflow to create GIS data and BIM data is often continually happening and connecting. And it is therefore that uh, while we are doing BIM project, it's good to know how GIS has been used to plan and to, uh, to regulate and to monitor the creations of the BIM project and how it's being integrated with the BIM data. And that people might sometimes say, when you, we use GIS for SIM and LIM, city information modeling, landscape information modeling, and that integrate with BIM. It's just like from a macro point of view or macro approach to a micro approach. And that even help us better to plan, design, build, and operate when we are doing our AEC projects. Now, I would like to give you some of the real examples of how GIS and, B, uh, and BIM has been integrated for planning and design. Um, thanks to the great leadership of Ms. Ada Fong and our hospital uh, housing authority has been using BIM and GIS for planning, design, and constructions very effectively. 
And there are also other examples in constructions that have successfully integrated GIS and BIM. You can see that this is a web-enabled GIS environment to direct capture all those BIM data. And for the, in the UK, the CrossRail also used GIS and BIM to help improve efficiency in construction projects. They have claimed that geospatial data has been a key building block in all phases of the CrossRail project and it provides common platform for integration of various types of data, and also prepare data for perform specialist data analysis, and to record location of the assets, and to deliver 3D visualizations. So it's CrossRail has been a heavy user of GIS. And for architectural services department, Hong Kong International Airport, they also use GIS and BIM for their operations and maintenance, and they have integrated well. In International Airport, they name it as the, um, uh, some kind of uh, GIS and BIM to help in from the construction stage to the visualizations and then to the management and maintenance stage. It is called a digital train for International Airport. Now I would like to share with you a short video of how GIS can help support building a smarter and more livable city and the integration of BIM and satellite imagery. So now we're going to show a demo about this line of sight. So here we can select our viewpoint from a flat and then select our target. And here we can see that the red line indicating that our target is not visible from the viewpoint, while the green line means that it is visible from the viewpoint. And we can have an instant calculation about the line of sight. And also, we can move the viewpoint so we have an instant analysis of it and show it directly on the web. And also, we can pan it and rotate it to have a different uh, viewpoint of it. So after it, we will show another demo. It is about the uh, slicing. It can slice or the BIM model and see the cross section of it. We can observe the interior it clearly, including the stairs, the table, and also the chairs. And also we can move the slice in and backward so we can have a very clear view of it. So after all, we'll have another demo. It is about the fly, fun fly function. We can fly through the city and observe different view. And you can uh, moving up and down, right and left freely. So you can observe the view at your own choice. It was just like you're flying on the on the air and like having a, having a drone or having an airplane observing the uh, city. So you can observe the surrounding environment of the BIM model and have a, a, an analysis. And after all, we'll have the profile. You can select different vertex on the ground and it will generate the elevation profile directly. And you, when your mouse is moving along the profile, and it will sh also show that where is it on the map. And also, you can move the vertex here, so you can have an also an instant calculation on the elevation model and showing it on the graph. So after all, I'm going to show another demo about the imagery. It is the Earth Observation Explorer. And on the left, we have the lens set and also the NDVI rendering. And we will choose the uh, imagery in 1973. And on the right, I will have the same imagery of 2020. So with this imagery and have a NDVI rendering analysis, we can observe the vegetation difference in shutting area in recent years. 
An NDVI is used to assess how much the area contains leaf green vegetation and is good to use for analyzing the level of urbanization and environmental protection. So it can use to see if the city reach balance of sustainable development, which is a key component of the smart city. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in the last uh, 20 minutes, I have gone through with you why we need smart city, definition of smart city, component of smart city, how different countries and cities set their themes on the smart city, and then the journey of Hong Kong through smart city, and some of the examples of the six components. And then we move on to GIS as the foundation technology for smart city. And the different bureau and departments are using GIS to build their smart city projects at that help enhance our efficiency, uh, saving our life, enhancing Hong Kong's economic competitiveness as well. Then you will ask me, what's next? What's next? There's are uh, four pillars of smart city. First is smart planning is very office related to your area, the AEC, to develop good planning engineering projects with uh, good urban and community design. For good services is often from the government to help develop smart services that improve operation efficiency, like the I am smart platform, the EID. And for civic, uh, civic uh, inclusions, how to connect with the community, that is Poi Cohen said the bottom-up approach, Smart City 3.0, or Japan, the theme of the Smart City is the Society 5.0, a human-centric city. Now, in fact, today, if you notice that, I actually talk more on the data-driven performance, that is, Smart city is actually a data-driven city, or how we can use open data, smart applications, to bring people together using technology to enhance decision-making, and thereafter, a better quality of life, more sustainable growth, and a, through the smart city, we have more quality jobs, and also, more transparency in our government as well. So these are the four pillars. And as an engineer, actually you should take part in the four, and in particular for the data-driven performance um, to help drive using the different technologies to power up smart applications. And we, Hong Kong, also need to develop the talents bank on the ICT development. In addition to technology transfer and product commercializations that a lot of people talk about it, we shall also focus on how to develop and nurture our talent on open data, the use of CSDI to foster innovation and creativity. It's not just for Hong Kong, but also for the Great Bay Area. Bear in mind the development plan has a highlight on making the Great Bay Area as a smart city cluster. Now, I would also like to share with you an effort by the LA city governor, Eric Grassetti. In 2016, he has created a geo hub which encompasses maps, geographic information from government, private sector, academia, and citizens. And this geo hub is not just a map showing the different facilities or uh, how to do more public engagement. In fact, it also opened up the data for the startup to build smart city applications. One of the applications is called the Clean Streets Index. They make use of the Clean Street Index apps that connect with the GeoHub data to ask the citizens to rate how clean the street is. Number one is clean, two is somewhat clean, and three, the third is not clean. And you know what? Within one year's time, he was able to use this GeoHub effort 
with the startup's hope on the app's development, as well as the citizens' engagement to turn over 80% of the streets in LA from not clean into clean. And that is very important uh, improvement of the city's uh, cleanliness and environment. And that is our good demonstrations of the use of open data, startup, as well as citizens' engagement to help support for a better place to live by the public private partnership. In the UK, last two years ago, they have set up the Geospatial Commission because they believe that GIS or geographic information can help unlock economic value. And they have earmarked over 80 million pounds over two years' time to help drive the UK's digital economy and open up the wealth of geographic information to everyone in the UK to develop application on top of it, and that they estimate that it will bring back over 11 billion pounds each year economic growth. And so far, it's been progressing very well. Now, in terms of future readiness, according to the World Economic Forum, every year they do a ranking. Hong Kong has been ranked quite high in the World Competitiveness Index. Um, sometimes it's uh, number seven and sometimes it's number two or three. However, in the Future Readiness Index, Hong Kong is not ranked too high. We are actually not in the top 20 and even behind of other uh, Asian cities like uh, countries like Malaysia, Indonesia, etc., etc. So, in order to make our cell future ready, and we need to embrace public private people's partnership, and we should move our smart cities approach from currently, perhaps we are in 2.0, to the 3.0 with more public engagement. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening to my humble sharing. I would like to end my presentations with this video, Seeing the Future Through GIS. To navigate the path ahead, we've always relied on those who see things differently. They show us that the possible can be a matter of how you see it. As change accelerates and complexity grows, now more than ever, we need those who can see what others can't to find our way forward. Over the years, many who see differently have shared with us how they see the future. Their vision continues to inspire us. There is an urge develop a cities. I learned map making in the United States Navy. Check makers in the first. We are creating a better connected and better informed citizenry. Jobs are going to require higher levels of thinking and decision making. So GIS is important because it helps students to be lifelong learners. Fading off the face of the earth, that shows the power of GIS to help us change the future. I think the absolute cutting edge of map making has to do with mapping the brain. These are going to be some of the most intricate memons I've ever built. 80% of the species on the planet are still unknown to science. So task number one is we're going to have to be doing a lot of mapping. We inch through a path of evolution, using our brain is utterly clean and pure. Places that have been utterly destroyed can be given another chance. If we just use the technologies join together with our minds and our hearts, there will be a different world, one 
that will be happy that your grandchildren and mine will have on into the future. Together, we have the power to choose the way forward. We have the power to see what others can't. So ladies and gentlemen, together, let's co-create our smart city. Once again, I would like to congratulate the winners of the Young Women Engineers Awards. And I do look forward to working with you all to do well and do good for Hong Kong, in particular, building Hong Kong as a smart city. Thank you very much. Many thanks to Dr. Tang for the inspiring speech. Before moving on to the award presentation, we would like to invite our chief judge, architect Ada Y.S. Fung BBS, director and board secretary, World Green Building Council, to give us her remarks on the, the awards. Architect Fung, please. Good morning, the, the, the guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is my honor to be the chief judge for the Young Women Engineers Award organized by the IET Hong Kong. The IET is a renowned engineering organization with more than 170,000 members worldwide. But engineering is a profession that with a very severe gender imbalance. Only around 20% of engineers in Hong Kong are female engineers right now. And against such background, this award is therefore a very inspiring event for female engineers, the first ever of its kind in Hong Kong. It gives recognition to young lady engineers who have made valuable contributions to society through their achievements and aspirations to the younger generations. I'm so glad to see the exemplary performance displayed by all the finalists. They are all high achievers in their own profession and their career, and they are all rounders with achievements in multiple tasks all the time. The judges have had a very difficult task to select the winners. May I offer my warmest congratulations to all the winners. They will be the career ambassadors for IET in the forthcoming years. I'm sure that they will perform a role, as a role model. The IET will be proud of them in future. Encouragement also goes to all those participants not awarded. We fully appreciate their excellent performance and their efforts. There will be suitable channels and arrangements to work with IET on this program in the future. Last but not the least, may I offer my thanks to IET Hong Kong, all the event organizers, the fellow colleagues in the judging panels. My special thanks goes to the organizing committee with so many capable lady engineers, led by Chair Lady Justina Ho. I have been most delighted to work with them, who made my experience as a, as a chief judge to be most meaningful and rewarding. I trust that this event will encourage more women to join the engineering profession, and the, EIT, the IET Hong Kong Award will sustain and flourish in the years to come. So may I now offer a round of applause to all the winners as well as the, as the IET organizers. Thank you. Thank you, Architect Fung. Please be seated. Coming to the most exciting moment of the day, we are here to congratulate two winners and three merit awardees of the IET Hong Kong Young Women Engineers Award 2019-2020 of the many brilliant young female practitioners in the engineering industry. The winners and awardees are celebrated as the best of the best in Hong Kong through rounds of nomination, screenings and interviews. Without further ado, we would now like to invite our Chief Judge Architect Fung BBS to present the YWE Award Open Category. Architect Fung, please. And the winner of YWE Award Open Category goes to Engineer Samantha W. M. Kong, Senior Engineer of Arab. Congratulations.
Thank you. Please remain on stage. May we also invite Ms. Vivian Chan, Associate of SMEC Asia Limited, to come on stage for a photo. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chen. Please remain. On, uh, please be seated. And please remain on stage. Um, we'd now like to invite Engineer Kong's endorser, Engineer Chao Lat Man, first referee, Engineer Anthony Lok Fong Quan, and second referee, Engineer Zhou Vin Cheng, to join us online for a photo. Apologies for a technical issue. Uh, due to a technical issue, maybe I'll invite you to be seated first. Thank you very much, and I'm, thus, I'm sorry about that. Thank you. Please be seated. Um, uh, architect from, please, please be seated. Thank you. We would now like to invite Engineer Kong to say a few words. Engineer Kong, please. Okay. Distinguished guests, judges, and fellow engineers, good morning. I'm overwhelmed with gratitude to have been selected to receive the Young, Fem uh, Young Woman Engineer of the Year Award. Thank you all so much for being here today, um, granting me the honor to gratefully accept this high distinction. This accomplishment is not something that I did alone, and there are many others who deserve to share in this award. Special thanks go to my endorser, engineer Chao Lat Men, reveries, um, engineer Anthony Kwan, and also engineer Zhou Vian Zheng who are, the three of them are with me today virtually online for nominating me for this award. I would like to thank my two um, masters, Sifu, uh, Vivian, and also Alexi, um, who have been inspiring me during my time at SMAC, the previous company that I was with before I joined Arab. They nurtured me to be an all-rounded engineer and to where I am today. I would like to thank my family, my partner, and friends for their love and support throughout my career. I will continue my efforts to promoting women in engineering and looking forward to bringing positive energy. And I will work hand in hand to other awardees and also uh, for, uh, with other awardees today to in join hands work together on promoting women in engineering. Within this, I'd like to share with you some inspiration throughout my journey as a female engineer, as not all of you know about my story today, to share with you also and my way forward as a WE awardee. Thank you, Engineer Kong. Yep, I'd like to share, um, is it possible to re remove the stage as I... Okay, so hi everyone. So um, I'm an engineer with Arab right now, uh, working on sustainability. So today I'd like to share with you a little bit about my story, which I'm given the time to share with you a, a little bit about my journey as an engineer. So I myself, um, apart from being an engineer, I'm also a social entrepreneur, and I've also been promoting environmental education um, for the past 10 plus years. And I was awarded the NWAWE 30 under 30 in 2018. 
So this is me today. I'm wearing mask today, so you can't recognize my face or don't even know how I look like. So um, I'd like to share with you a little bit about myself. I was brought up in a girls' school um, since primary one, and I've been surrounded with girls for many years. And to me, I've always been thinking working together with girls is actually an important element in my life. Girl power. So this is also something that w, uh, YWE and also the award today, which how we can work together in promoting women in engineering. So um, this is a little bit about myself. So I have some um, taglines that I would like to promote as well, like to share with you some of my, my thoughts um, as an engineer myself. So always I reminded myself, be a student for life, always keep learning and equip yourself. So right now, I'm actually pursuing my doctorate degree um, in my fourth year, almost finishing. But because of COVID, I couldn't do my defense in UK. So um, I've been studying about environmental education, how Hong Kong, we can, as a female engineer, promote more in the area of um, environmental education. So this is a little bit about my journey. Perhaps you, you may wonder, what's my career look like? Uh, what am I? So previously, um, right after I graduated in 2014 with my bachelor's degree, I actually worked at the United Nations. So um, I always remind myself, have clear written goals and also know about yourself, like what you want to be and the passion that you would like to pursue. So I got the chance to work at the UN on uh, the sustainable development goals, on drafting policies and everything. So after that, I did start my HKM, uh, HKIE Skimmy training. So I was with Smack Asia Limited, and um, I work as an environmental engineer, chartered environmental en engineer, and also the CSR lead, corporate social responsibility. So I've been working on environmental impact projects. So you can see myself in uh, uh, going to construction sites and. Uh, also, I reminded myself, life is too short to stay in a job that makes you depressed uh, every day. So it's always good to think about, are you willing to take on and step out of your comfort zone? So I've been working on submarine cables while I was at SMAC, uh, doing a lot of design and also gazetting a lot of process. So um, telecommunications is one of the key aspects, like Dr. Winnie also explained, um, ICT, even GIS, how we can merge together technology and sustainability. So um, it also reminded me something as a young engineer at that time. You owe it to yourself to ensure that your workday can be positive and enjoyable as possible. So this was me preparing, uh, working on CSR projects when I was in SMAC, um, corporate social responsibility. So as an engineer, we not only do um, projects in the office. So was thinking about new projects or new ideas that we can come up with to utilize some of the resources that we have in the society and to build new products and also help contribute to the society as well. So empathy is the view that runs the society. So last year, it was a really big step for me. I actually went to UC Berkeley with the HKIE scholarship to do a three-month uh, ma master planning course because I was uh, thinking as an engineer, we always work with master planners and architects. So it's good to know about the knowledge outside my own expertise. So again, I reminded myself to step out of comfort zone. It was a really hard move for me because I've been working for five years and to take a step to suddenly be a full-time student, it was quite a struggle. But indeed, it's good to move out and to see the world. And uh, now I'm with Arab, and um, my major role is working on sustainability engineering. So what I've been doing is mainly on sustainable design and also some of the green infrastructure. And I also look into SDG, um, the sustainable development goals that I mentioned just now uh, that I work at the UN. So I've been doing internal trainings with some of the senior staff to make sure they know how to promote sustainable development in their work projects as well. So do not choose jobs that you do not like because it will not uh, because you think it will look good, good on your CV. So remind yourself choose the something that you really want to. So um, next is be more than just your nine to five. Nine to five is a nine to five office hours. So always like think about something that you can contribute. So even as an awardee, um, all of us we can think about what we can do more to the society. 
So this is a book that I published in 2015. So it's with engineering, C, so it's all for. The message of uh, publishing this book is that many people or uh, the next generation, they may not know what engineering is about. So it was a good opportunity to pr um, publish this book with uh, all along 45 HKUST alumni, my alma mater, so to actually promote the message of how engineers can contribute to the society. And these are some of the public uh, the news report. And then volunteer your time is really important, like what we're doing now and hopefully in the future we can, as IET ambassador, what we can do more, volunteer our time and help out. So this is a social entrepreneur, uh, a social enterprise that I talk about. This is my own business. I do it um, aside of work. So what we do is to promote um, aging population, like how we can help the elderly in the society and using the elderly simulation program, how we as youngsters, as young engineers, uh, when, whenever we design some of the, for example, MTR stations, we can think about like how we can do it more user friendly. So this is uh, a, a, a uniform or, or a costume that we do as simulation to help the uh, old people. So some of the public services that I'm, I'm now sitting at uh, several advisory panels in the government. And the UN SDG that I've, I've just mentioned. So I think it's good um, as an awardee today, like as my acceptance speech, speech part of it, I would like to also promote SDG because IET is an international organization. And how we can work join hands with all engineers to promote SDG as a whole. And uh, this is the program that I actually designed it myself and uh, worked together with some of the NGOs in Hong Kong. Um, it's called the SDG Junior Ambassador Program. So at the UN, what we call diplomat diplomats. So in, in Hong Kong, I tried to come up with a name called ambassador. So students, they got a, an identity on how they can promote SDG as a whole. So this SDG uh, program that I've done uh, has been two years, um, and then I've been promoting and training up girl guides in Hong Kong, because what we talk about, girl power in my first um, slide, and I'd like to do more on this um, area. So I think it will be an area apart from STEM education, SDG for girls is also something important for us to look into. So last but not least, these are the five points that have been reminding me throughout my career. First is career planning, time management, establish good relationship, develop inner balance, and last but not least, step out of your comfort zone. So my career goal, not only a problem solver, I would like to be a change maker as well as an educator in the future. So I hope we can work together hand in hand and, uh, and to make change and make positive impact to the society. So as the awardee, there are three points that I like to do. Join hands with other awardees in working together. Second is inspire the younger generation on uh, promoting girls in engineering and also SDG for girls. And last but not least, enhance the image of female engineers as well. So that's all for me. So always remind yourself, think big and never give up. Um, last but not least, thank you everyone. The OC, um, IET Hong Kong and uh, organizing committee and also all my um, endorser reveries were uh, watching it today with me. So thank you all, let's keep in touch, thank you. Thank you Engineer Kong. Uh, please remain on stage. I believe we've got the technical issue oh. resolved and uh, your endorser, Engineer Chow, is now online. So maybe it's time we switch the screen for grid photo. Apologies, Architect Fung. May we uh, invite you to be on stage again for the group photo? Thank you very much.
My apologies. Thank you very much. much. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Next, we would now like to invite Professor Stella W. Pang, Chair Professor and Head of Department of Electrical Engineering of the City University of Hong Kong, also a member of our final round judging panel, to present the YWE Award CNG Chartered Engineer category. Thank you. And the winner of YWE Award CNG category goes to Ms. Jamie H. T. Su, Project Manager of CLPE Solutions. Congratulations. Thank you. Please remain on stage. We will also invite Ms. Winnie Chan to come on stage for a photo. Thank you. Thank you very much, and we've already taken a photo of all of us. Please be seated. Sorry. Thank you. Please be seated. Um, Please remain on stage. Um, at the meantime, I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Hughes endorser, Engineer Lam, first referee, Engineer Tui, second referee, Engineer Chan, to be uh, with us online in this um, ceremony. So uh, now let us invite Ms. Hsu to say a few words. Ms. Hsu, please. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining this ceremony. I'm honored to receive this award, and I can't be more grateful that I have met met many good friends, mentors, on the course of my career. I would like to express my gratitude to those who have supported me, uplifted me, and made me who I am today. First of all, I would like to thank my family. I will never make it without my family. I would like to thank my parents, who devote all they have to raise me up and provide education for me. They respect every decision I've made, and, and always be with me. I really appreciate that. Much appreciation goes to my husband, who always support me every step of the way with patience, humor, and love. He encouraged me to be myself. He taught me to embrace my imperfections and face my fears. I can never thank you enough for my family. Then I would like to dedicate this award to my team, CLPE Airport team. They have always been supporting me and believing in me. When I was a fast graduate, a gentleman didn't care about my academic background and experience and employed me as the only female engineer in the team. Thank you for his insights on building a diverse and inclusive team. My supervisor walked me step by step throughout my career. He didn't assume me I would go less far because I'm a female engineer. He encouraged me to take initiatives and provide many opportunities to try new things. He teach me by his example and made me realize that my career goals are worth striving for. Special thanks to those who looked down on me. They, are, they were my motivations to work harder and keep the momentum on. This award is not about winning. It's about not giving up. When people talk about female engineers, the word female implies a bit of surprise. When I started off my career eight years ago, I felt like I'm different. Now I'm standing here, and I would like to tell the girl out there who, who also felt that she was different, she doesn't fit in anywhere, or she, she, she felt like it, they are 
not the normal, normal person in the team, I would like to tell you that you are not. I promise you do. You, you are part of the team. Do not underestimate your abilities. Last year, I went to India with a group of female engineers for, the, for a networking event. We have different cultures, but there is one thing in common across the countries, is gender equality. I'm frustrated by the lacking status of the women in our profession worldwide. We need more female role models to tell the girl, women can be outstanding, and it is the right thing to do if we want to do so. Sometimes it might be not that easy for women to be confident in workplace because it is hard to be recognized by experienced engineers. I'm luckier than the most because the team, be because the team I belong to create an atmosphere of openness. They let me know that I should never be afraid of speaking up. This makes me have faith in this industry. IET is an excellent community, give us the sense that we are not alone and we are part of something bigger. Changes start today, although changes start small with people like us. I wish every one of you could more advocate for women and those who are weaker in the workplace. We need more men to sponsor women and we also need more women to, be, to stop self-doubt and fight for what they want. I really hope that in the future, men and women are equally valued and represent. Someday, there will be no female engineers. There will be just engineers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Monsieur. Please be seated. We would now like to invite engineer C.S. Chang, past chairman of IET Hong Kong, also a member of our final round judging panel, to present one of our three merit awards. We will now invite engineer Chang on stage, please. And our merit award goes to Ms. Winky K.W. Lui, engineer of China Gas Company Limited. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, please remain on stage. May I also invite engineer Duncan Wong from Town Gas to come on stage for a photo. Thank you. Thank you very much. At the meantime, we are taking a photo with Ms. Lloyd's endorsers and referees, including Dr. N. F. Chin, Engineer Melvin Wong, Engineer Peter Chak, and Mr. William Yip, who are joining us online for a photo. So we take the photo on the computer. And I believe it is done. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Ms. Lloyd, please remain on stage for a speech. Honorable guests and judges, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm much delighted with gratitude for being selected as one of the finalists and awardees for Merit Award. I'm very honored for having my work and contributions being recognized by the IET Hong Kong. Um, uh, actually, um, I think uh, this award uh, to me is more than just to win a competition because uh, I'm offered a great chance to meet other brilliant women engineers in the field uh, today uh, who might share similar vision and passion with me. So uh, I think it's wonderful uh, for us to get to know each other, to exchange ideas, uh, to be inspired by each other, and explore any opportunities that we can synergize our strengths to make some positive contributions to the industry. Um, at the same time, I, I have to thank you. My, uh, I have to thank my company, Tangas, uh, for the training and guidance to build my capability up as an engineering professional. 
and I want to express my sincere gratitude to my endorser, Dr. N.F. Chin, and my referees, uh, engineer Ansu Wong, engineer Melvin Wong, engineer Peter Chek, and Mr. William Yip for their encouragement and support to my application. In the long run, I hope to promote engineering as an exciting, impactful, and glamorous career for high flyers, no matter males or females. To achieve this goal, I will continue my efforts to uh, volunteer in promoting the STEM education among primary and secondary schools and provide mentorship to undergraduate engineering students. Uh, and also, I think uh, IET is one of the best platforms for me to keep my momentum rolling by continuously serving the engineering community and by uh, actively engage in youth mentoring program so as to prepare the younger generations to uh, pursue a future career in engineering and to neutralize the gender bias in the industry. So I look forward to seeing more and more women engineers joining our family, our industry, for many years to come. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Blair. Please be seated. We would now like to invite Dr. Tim Wu, Chairman of IET Hong Kong, to present one of our three merit awards. Sorry, technical apologies. I would now like to invite Ms. Justina Ho, Chair Lady of the, our organizing committee, to present one of our three Merit Awards. Ms. Ho on stage, please. And our Merit Award goes to Engineer Joanne C. Y. Lo, Building Services Engineer of Hong Kong Housing Department. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Please remain on stage. We'd now like to invite Mr. Chris Mook to come on stage for a photo. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Engineer Lowe, please remain on stage. We'd like to invite a few words from you. Be careful. Thank you. Thank you, IET Hong Kong. Honorable guests, judges, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my nominators for this award. Ms. Alice Young, the Assistant Director Architecture of ASD. Mr. K.S. Yao, the former Chief Building Services Engineer of Housing Department. And Mr. Jackie Hong, the past Chairman, Power and Energy Section of IET Hong Kong. Thank you very much for your trust and support. This is the first award I've ever entered. It meant a lot to me in the submission to the award and helped me go through all the steps to this award. I've been very fortunate in my education and career path. That's all collateral beauty from the above. My family has given me great support unconditionally the companies I joined have supported me, encouraged me to take on responsibilities, and provide me with opportunities to progress. There's a saying that the new definition of successful in this era is successful in career, at the same time enjoying one's life, bringing happiness to oneself and others. This would continue to be one of my mottos in the coming years. Apart from progressing in my company, I would engage in service in the industry and society, and also explore myself to other interesting areas in life. Before I hand over the stage back to the MC, I would like to share the latest report from the World Economic Forum about the top skills to have in 2025. Critical and analytical thinking Reasoning and problem solving remain the top of the skill list that employers believe will grow in prominence in the next five years. Creativity and originality and people skills follow. 
There are some new skills emerge in the list, which are skills in self-management, such as active learning, stress tolerance, and flexibility. Some specialized skills in technology use, product marketing, digital marketing, and human computer interaction are included in the list. That indicate in demand skills across jobs change over the next five years. Employers are always looking for all round persons, not to mention your professional background. How do you express yourself and your personal charisma counts? I'm hoping that YWE will encourage other young ladies to see what a rewarding career engineering can be. Thank you very much. Thank you, Engineer Lowe. Please be seated. We would now like to invite Dr. Tim Wu, Chairman of IET Hong Kong, to present one of our three Merit Awards. Thank you. And our Merit Award goes to Miss Melody Y.T. Wong, Consultant of Arab. Congratulations. Thank you. In the meantime, we've already taken a photo of, of you and uh, your endorser, Engineer Henry Chen, first referee, Engineer Dr. Chang, and second referee, Engineer William Wang. So thank you, and we'd like to invite Ms. Wong for a, a few words. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, it's time to have a call. I'm Melody. I'm a building sustainability uh, consultant in our same company as Samantha now. And I like science and engineering, and that's why it turns to be my career. Like any other people, I was, I was also struggled before. Before saying thank you to the others, I would like to tell you a short story about myself. I remember at a time when my A-level result released, my parents strongly encouraged me to get into business subject. I still may think that it is the most promising career and I could earn great money. Yet, I was so determined and I know my interest is in STEM subject rather than business. Then I told my parents I wanted to follow my interest for my bachelor degree. Yeah, my parents just had to accept that Although I mentioned now in a very mild way, I'm sure that the conversation at that time was quite fierce at that time, like shouting, crying, and slamming the door. But before my graduation, my parents also gave me an advice again. They want me to get into a job like in government or in client because they think that it's more stable at the same time, again, earn more money. But I didn't listen to them again. I was so eager to be a consultant because I want to apply my knowledge to the others. Like I like providing solutions to the clients to deal with problems and the sense of satisfaction makes me so fascinated to be a consultant. To them, even now, I may not be a very obedient daughter. I never follow their advice, but their baby girl, me, is trying to pursue her career goal step by step and contributing to the engineering community. At least they should be proud of today. And I'm so thankful that IIT Hong Kong YWE recognizing my effort. I would like to take this opportunity to thank some referees and endorser. My boss, Dr. F. Vincent Chan, engineer William Wen, and engineer Henry Chan. I would like to say thank you to my dearest friends like here today because they encouraged me to apply for the award. Without their encouragement and support, I won't be here, be able to deliver my speech. Getting an award is challenging, let alone like organizing this YWE award, determining the winners, and many. I really appreciate IET Hong Kong offering a such a great platform so that I could get to know the other brilliant women engineers. And only by having a platform, we, all the passionate people, could be grouped together to achieve our goals more easily, effectively, and be, to be more impactful. Creating a diversified workplace is never easy. 
especially when we are in an industry who are known for imbalance in gender. But now it's different because people are more conscious and people are more well-educated to know about, to realize about stereotype, which we seldom or refrain to talk about in the past. Also, we are in a place who is known as international city. We have both Eastern and Western culture. And we have people with different internationalities, colors, religions, and cultures. Everyone is different. And we should respect the uniqueness of everyone. And I believe by only having various kind of person, different perspective, viewpoints, voices, it helps to come up with the optimal solution. Yeah, we always talk about optimal solution in engineering, right? And by having the optimal solution to our job in engineering community and to the society. The story about myself that I've mentioned at the very beginning may actually reveal many families in Hong Kong. But not everyone could be as determined or as bad as me to not to follow the advice from my parents. So education to our future generation is crucial. In the coming years, I would like to continue to share as much as I could to nurture the youngsters so that they can know more about engineering. Engineering is actually very interesting and being as an engineer is also a very promising career. I would like to also encourage all of you here physically and also in the Zoom to join hands together to help create more harmonized and diversified engineering community. By like joining our events, posting on social media, or sharing by yourself, telling your friends and many. Every little step is actually seeding for our future. And please look, don't look down on your these little action. Last but not least, getting the award is not the destination. This is just the beginning. I hope I can represent IET Hong Kong as an ambassador to contribute in a wide range of activities to create more impactful effects to this society. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wong. Almost to the end of today's event, we'd like to invite all of you for a good photo. First of all, may we now invite all winners and awardees on stage for a good photo. Thank you. Please come on stage for a good photo. Thank you. Thank you. Please remain on stage. We'd like to invite our final round judges to join us on stage for a good photo. We'd like to invite Dr. Tim Wu, our chairman, to come on stage also. Thank you.
Thank you. Please remain on stage. We'd now like to invite our first round judges on stage also for a group photo. Judges, please. Thank you. Please remain on stage. We'd like to take uh, a final grand group photo with everyone else on stage. So may I invite everyone else, uh, our guests and our uh, OCs on stage for a big group photo. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed the ceremony, either online or in this hall with us. On behalf of the OC and the IET Hong Kong, my apologies for all those hiccups during the event. I hope you still enjoy it. Before we leave, we'd like to give our sincere gratitude to our honorable guests and judges. Thank you very much. And another round of thanks to ROC for their hard work coordinating this event despite the complex pandemic situation. <laughs>